minute since I have popped in here to give you guys all an update on all of the knitting adventures. But um, yeah, we've, we've just had kind of some obstacles in the way. So we've conquered those obstacles and we're ready to go today. So grab something warm to drink, maybe some knitting to work on, and let's chat for a little bit. All right, you guys, if you're new here, my name is Laura and I am the owner of Back Porch Fiber Co. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Back Porch Fiber Co. You can find me on Etsy, Back Porch Fiber Co. And you can now find me on my website, www.backporchfiberco.com. And there I do have a couple of items that are only found on my website and not on Etsy. So, and I'll share those with you guys in a little bit. But um, yeah, so check me out there as well. You can find me on all those spots. If you need to get in touch with me, the best way to do that is either on Instagram through instant message or through um, my email, which is backporchfiberco at gmail.com. And all that information is below in the description. If you're watching from your mobile device, it might look, instead of it being a button, it might just start the description and then it'll say more. Just click on that more button and it'll show you all the information. I'll share all the links, patterns, yarn that I'm using, etc. for this podcast. Anything that I mention in this podcast will be down below. All right. Just wanna clear up um, a couple things that are on my list real quick. The um, where's, looking at my little notes, the winner of the February's giveaway for the dishcloth, um, make along has not reached out to me yet. So if you know this person, please send them a message. I'm going to go back through and comment on their comment. Um, it was a YouTube comment and the winner is Susan Tobin 719, putting it down here on the screen. Um, but she made a comment on one of my dishcloth make along YouTube videos. All right, so I feel like I'm kind of like fighting the sun. Like if I come too much forward, the sun is gonna go across my face. So I'm hoping that all this films well. Kind of trying to stay back away from the sun. But um, so funny story. I went to Knit Group this morning and my friend Jenny Lynn from Knit Group. Hi, Jenny Lynn. Um, she had made a comment and I love her that she did this because it was just the kick in the pants that I needed but she's like I'm waiting for your March YouTube video to come out I want to know what you're doing for your dishcloth because I want to do the same pattern and she's so right you guys I feel like I've just left y'all hanging and I'm so sorry about that but we will go over all the dishcloth stuff very first thing after we take care of some business um just because if you're here for the dishcloth make along I want to get you guys all squared away so thank you so much for hanging in there with me. Um, I was like explaining to her all of the troubles that we've just kind of been up against, but my computer is super old. And um, so I, I feel like I'm just playing this puzzle game when I have to download and edit videos and everything. And um, you know, it's like go to this computer for this and then come over here for this and then find this over here and then download this from my phone and all of these things. So. I actually just recently got an iPad this last week, so I'm hoping that I can keep all of my information and everything right there on my iPad. I can edit my videos, store all the videos and the um, all my notes, everything on there. So really excited. I'm going to try that out after I film this, but that's kind of the biggest reason why I have not, um, the biggest reason why I have not podcasted. I've actually filmed three different times and I will put some of that footage in here. It was more like vlog footage. And then I would like wait to edit it because I was up against all these obstacles. And then at that, at that time, it kind of felt irrelevant to put that footage out there. So I'll put some of the little fun things. Maybe you, you may have already seen some, I might put some at the back or in the middle or whatever, but We'll, we'll do that too. Okay. So if you know Susan Tobin 719, please reach out to her and tell her to reach out to me. I don't want to send her a direct email just because I know that there's a lot of scams out there. So I do require her to reach out to me. 
I will, however, like comment on her comment after I film this video, just letting her know like, hey, reach out to me, you won. But anyways, oh, I need to get, I need to go get um, March's prize. But yeah, I'm gonna go do that real quick, hang tight. Okay, so this month's winner, March, March's winner, is going to receive a one of my project bags that I sell in my shop. Dishcloth knitting is my jam. It's an eight by ten um, project bag. Perfect, perfect for dishcloths, socks, hats, that kind of thing. It's just a small little bag. I love these things and I use them all the time. Like you'll see over here, I do a lot of knitting in my car. I swear, yesterday I think the only knitting that I got done that was like before 9 p.m. was in my car. So whether that's waiting for a kiddo, like taking a class, because we homeschool, so it could be that, or um, driving with my husband, <laughs> he's driving, I'm knitting. I don't know, like they're literally, that's where I get the most of my knitting done is in my car. So when I have a smaller project that is easy to take on the go, these bags are amazing. There's one that says, um, this is my emergency knitting bag. This is my car knitting bag. This is my road trip knitting bag. And if you want, I can even customize something for you. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let me know if there's anything that you want. So the winner is going to receive this, um, project bag. I love this one so much. And, um, this friend's cotton eight, four, which is what I'm using for my dishcloths right now. It is, um, it's a fingering weight. So it's the Friends 8-4 Cotton in a fingering weight, color number 36. I do not know exactly what color name this is. It might be like coral or something like that, but either way, it is a coral color. And I feel like, let's see, okay, that might be better. I'll take a picture of it and put it, put it on there so you can see. But the winner of this, or the, the recipient of this fun prize is coffee bean counter knits and she um tagged me or commented i don't know exactly which one but on instagram so i will also announce the winner i'll announce her name on instagram as well so reminder how to enter is you can um comment below on any of my dishcloths make along videos you can um use the hashtag um BPSC, M-A-L, no, BPSC dishcloth, M-A-L. I'll put, I'll put it on the screen here. Um, so many letters, <laughs> um, but you can, so you can use that hashtag and um, tag me in your photos of your dishcloths that you're working on. You can do one the entire year. You can, and, and, show me that a couple times and each one of those is an entry this is a super casual super super casual knit on or knit a hmm, make along if you're sewing them weaving them crocheting them knitting them it doesn't matter you're just making dishcloths or something similar to a dishcloth i know some people are making coasters totally fine hand towels totally fine um, oven mitts totally good just something along that, those lines. Okay, I think that covers everything. So um, coffee bean counter knits, reach out to me for your prize and I will get this in the mail to you. I'm so excited. I think I need to take one of these for my, for my stash because <laughs> I just love it so much. There's a lot, like a lot of the times when things are, um, when I don't have as many of these types of things in the shop, I won't take one for myself because I want you guys to get them. But I love it. I've been like drooling over this for I don't know how long. So, yeah. okay, that is that. Put this up here. Okay, next on my list, let's, so I, I mentioned we're gonna do all of the dish cloths info, wrap up, all of that kind of stuff right now. So here we go. Okay. If I'm looking down, it's because I don't really have a better place to put my notes and I just need, need to look down for my notes. So February. Okay. Well, here, let me, can I just show you guys? 
look at how amazing this is looking. I had these, um, or at least these three out um, in my kitchen. Like every time I walk by, I just love it so much. And I've not used them yet because they're just so pretty, which is so silly. I don't know. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So the two February dishcloths that I did, I feel like I just barely squeaked in. I think I even finished it March 1st, but I'm not sure. But I did one knit and one crochet. So this is the first one. And this is, all of this is Friends 8-4 cotton. It's a fingering weight cotton. And this is color number 123 charcoal. I'm just not sure that this is showing up the way that the light is coming through. I don't know. If not, I'm really sorry. Here, let's maybe go this way. So this is the pattern Broken Basket Weave. And it comes from this book, Easy Knit Dishcloths. Okay. Broken Basket Weave. And then the February Crochet Dishcloth which is coming from this book. And this is number 15, Walnut in the Friends 8-4 Cotton. And I'm just gonna say that I didn't love this pattern. I, just, I feel like it just kind of sits funny for me. Like when you pull it apart, it it's beautiful, but like, I don't know, like just this waffly, not, it's not even a waffle, it's like ridges, I guess. It reminds me of like those fans that we used to make out of paper when we were kids, like, you know, you fold it back and forth. That's kind of what it reminds me of, which feels a little bit funny to me. I don't know. I just don't love, I, I don't love the pattern and it's funny because in there it, you know, it talks about like how you're going to want to just redo this pattern over and over and over again. And no, I'm, I'm good. The one time was good and I don't regret doing it. It was fun to experiment with it. And that's the beauty of dishcloths, you guys. Isn't that amazing? Like this, this is it and I'm done. Never have to do this again, but I was still able to finish the project, which is so, so good. I love that. Okay, so. So that is February's wrap up. Got those done. Um, March, I'm getting a little bit of a later start, but I'll show you guys what I have. So I am doing um, this side over here. Oh, my goodness. Where is, oh, it is right here. This is my dishcloth knitting bag. I do have one that says, this is my dishcloth crochet bag. And yes, I use the knitting one for my niche dishcloth and the crochet one for my crochet dishcloth. Now, the cool thing about this, well, nope, it is still dishcloth knitting. Sorry, I didn't do crochet one. I could, if anybody's interested, let me know. All right, so I am using Again, the Friends Cotton 8-4 in the Dusty Mauve colorway, number 58. Right there. And this is the pattern. That's the right side. The wrong side still looks cool too. I'm really hoping that this all films correctly. I don't know. Okay, so this is a cloth with ripples is what it is called. So there's just like some garter ridges in there. So here I'm going to kind of show this way because it is a paid for book. But so that is the pattern, a cloth with ripples. And this is page 31 in the Easy Knit Dishcloths. So then for crochet, so you guys, I'm going to tell you this too, that if you want, you, I mean, you can, I bought these books on Amazon. I will put an affiliate link down below. So it's easy for you guys because you just click on that link and it takes you straight to Amazon to buy the books and I get a little kickback. It's pennies really. It's not much, but if you want, you know, to support me in that way, that's great. 
um, but no pressure. Um, or you can just go and search for it yourself as well. But both of these books, I have affiliate links to down below in the notes. Okay, so then for, um, oh, I need to switch it up here. Let me find my pattern. Yep, this is the one. It's called Euranthus. It says, this pattern is reminiscent of fine little Euranthus flowers. The cloth has the same delicate pattern on both sides. It's definitely a cloth that you'll want to crochet again and again. We will see. But this is what it looks like. Super excited. And I'm gonna use, um, again, Friends 8-4 Cotton in color 76. This is Icy Blue. I think that that'll be a nice addition over here. Super excited. So those are my March plans. I am hoping that I get all of this done. My goal is to do one knit and one crochet dishcloth a month. Okay, Amazon is coming and probably gonna knock on the door. The dogs may go crazy, so we'll just see how far we can get and I may have to stop. Because <laughs> we are, I'm receiving a book that I got for a friend today. Okay. The other dishcloth business that I want to take care of with you guys today. So we did February's winner. We did March's winner. We did February recap on the patterns, March's patterns. The next thing that I want to talk with you guys about is an idea that is swarming around in my head. I'm so excited about it. I've um, purchased a few things to kind of test some things out and just been doing a lot of um, like wholesale shopping and everything to get you guys some really cool products. But what I'm thinking about doing is for the summer, June, July, and August, doing a dish cloth kit. And what would be included in that kit is the hobby yarn in the friends colorways um it'll be the 8 8 which is a um a worsted dishcloth uh, weight or a worsted cotton and the reason that i was deciding to do the 8 8 instead of the 8 4 is because I, for one i'm going to design my own pattern so they will not be patterns out of this book so the kit will include the yarn the pattern, and then some other fun goodies every single month. Um, shipping will be included in on the price. I have not priced it out quite yet, but um, the Hobby Friends yarn is by far the best price and the best, like, best price and quality that I have found. I really, really enjoy working with it. I have not worked on the 8.8, so I'm like anxious to see that. I've also got a sport weight to see if that is something that I want to use. Um, but the goodies, it'll, it would be notions. Like I thought that maybe the first bag would have, or the first kit would have one of the bags in it and it would be a specially designed one just for the kit. Um, it might be needle stoppers, any kinds of notions, progress keepers, stitch markers. Um, so, I don't know, it could be scissors, all that kind of stuff, tape measures, a notions pouch. I don't know, It'll, it will be super fun and everything will coordinate in there. So I'm thinking about that. Let me know if that is something that you guys would like to do because it will help me to plan. And when I say like, yes, like I'm looking just for honest feedback. So if this is you and you're like, yes, I would love the dishcloth kit, like, please count me in, then I will, that will kind of dictate how many I start offering. I'm kind of thinking right now, just like maybe offer about 20 is what I'm thinking. Um, like 20 kits for each month. But I'm not sure if there's a huge interest, I can do more. I just kind of need to know ahead of time if I need to do more than 20. So there's that. I'm so excited about it. The other, so it'll also include a free pattern as well that will be 
like in the kit that it'll just all come along there. It'll be a printed pattern. Um, and then, I mean, I could probably even do like a digital copy too, but it'll definitely be a printed pattern for you guys. And then, um, let's see what else. Oh, there will also be a, there'll all be knit patterns because I'm not proficient enough in crochet to do a crochet pattern, to, to design a crochet pattern. I'm not there yet. Maybe one day, but not there yet. And then, um, let's see the other thing. Mm, the other add-on would be the crochet, or sorry, the knitting needles. So like if you wanted to add on a knitting needle set to go like your your box, let's say your box is $25 and you're like, yes, please send me the, the knitting needle to go along with that, then maybe that's an additional eight or $10 depending on what the cost of the needle is for you guys. So, um, but I know that not everybody needs that, so it would be an add-on. Let me know what you guys think about that. I'm really, really curious to know your thoughts on that. If that's something that you guys would be interested in. I'm also even thinking about doing just a super simple pattern, like a, like a corner to corner garter ridge dishcloth, something that um, is very, very, very beginner friendly. Because as I'm noticing, like people, dishcloths are so good for people to start with. Um, because they're so, like, if you're doing the corner to corner, you're not casting on a lot. You'll be increasing and decreasing, but neither one of those things, depending on how you do it, are that difficult to do. So I do think that it would be very beginner friendly. It's like there would be a standard beginner friendly pattern so that anybody who wants to just say like, yes, I want to learn how to knit could pick up this kit and it would have their pattern, their yarn, their needles if they needed them, and some, some fun notions to go along with all of that. All right, that's my thought. Tell me what you guys think. Super excited. Okay, that's it with this, with dish cloth stuff. So if you're here for all of it, stick around. And if not, thanks so much for sticking around this long. Okay, so I took a break and opened up my Amazon package so I could share it with you guys real quick. So this is for a friend of mine whose birthday was last week um, and I'm taking her out in like a week and a half or so. We're gonna go to a little bakery in Napa called Bouchon's Bakery and um, we're gonna grab a coffee and a pastry. It's like all French pastries. They are so good, so good. And then um, we're gonna play games and then have lunch and just hang out for the day. But, um, and her name is also Laura. So she was actually my very first friend that I met when we moved to the town that we're in. And funny story is that our girls, like I, we met at the school that our kiddos went to and all of a sudden, you know, she goes, oh, you need to meet my daughter or, you know, your daughter needs to meet my daughter. And then, the next thing we know, we look over and our daughters are fast friends, holding hands, walking out of class together. It was beautiful. It was like, it was just so needed when we moved here. So anyways, um, okay. So the book that I am getting her just in case, like anybody else is interested, it's called Mrs. Quinn's Rise to Fame. I have not read this book. I know like not much about it. My daughter recommended it. She loves books. She wants to be a librarian. She's an adult, so it's not like a childhood dream of being a librarian. Like, no, she actually really like is going to get her master's so she can be a librarian. Um, so what she said it was like is kind of like a mystery. I can't remember if it's a murder mystery or just a mystery, but she said it was like a lighthearted, kind of like the glass onion or like knives out, that kind of thing. If you've never seen those movies, they're great. It's they're like they're murder mysteries with all of these twists and it's clean. Like it's a good clean movie, but they're the same author or the same uh, director, writer, both of those movies. So anyways, this is a book that I'm going to get for her. And I kind of feel like maybe I want to borrow my daughter's copy and read it, but I have a few other books to read. 
it got hot in here all of a sudden. I think it's just like the, the sun shining through. I think I'm gonna close this window here next to me and see if that helps. All right, hopefully the lighting is still okay. So like fun stories, I'm still actually in my workout gear today. I did a, I have knitting group on Friday mornings and then I walk over to my Pilates class and my husband joined me for Pilates this morning, which was so fun. It was a lot of fun. All right, next on my list, let me see here. Oh, I was gonna talk about some works in prog progress. Here we go. Okay, so first thing I want to show with you guys, so show to you guys is my alignment throw. My goal on this to be done by the end of the year is two crosses um, every month. I got it done last month, but I was booking it there at the end because I hadn't even picked it up until like the last week. So the last week of February. So um, so this pattern is from Margaret from a, from Heidi and Lana. And all the crosses are her yarns, whether they're minis that I bought or um, her Patreon yarn. Okay, this is still like coming through. Hold on. Okay, that's better. <laughs> I don't know what this is doing to the lighting. We'll find out. I hope I don't have to record again. Okay, so I did for February, I don't know what these color names are. There, a lot of them are just the Patreon yarn, so it'll just say like January, Patreon, February, Patreon, etc. So I did this one and this one for February, and I'm at the point in my blanket. So th these are all knit in strips, if you've not seen this pattern. Um, and then you seam them together, and it's like the... The one right next to this will be offset by like a third of a um, cross. So like it kind of starts like this. Um, so I am at the point where I kind of need to coordinate the colors because I wouldn't want like a whole bunch of blues right next to each other. I don't mind having a lot of blues in there or whatever the color is. I just don't want them right next to each other. So I am at the point where I kind of need to coordinate a little bit. Um, but so the, yeah, these were my January or my February crosses, these two. This is my March cross, I already have it. One done, and like really done, so. And then I'm ready to add in my second March cross, and I'm gonna try for this yellow. Like it's a kind of a golden yellow. I feel like, like even with this one here, when you see them caked up, um, it doesn't, it feels like there won't be enough contrast with the bare yarn, but, and I felt that way with the blue one and there's definitely enough contrast. So I'm going to try it. Worst comes to worst, I'll just rip it out and start over. So not a big deal. I should know pretty quick. I think it probably about six rows in, I think, and they're little rows, but this is a fun project because it's super easy to bring with you. Um, yeah, but then by the end, you'll have this huge blanket. And I think I'm actually going to do one more. Well, I don't know if I can. I was going to say one more strip of, but, but then if I do that, I would actually have to do two more so that I end up with a, a full cross on each corner. I don't know. Maybe not. So how I'm doing this, I did make a modification to the pattern. Um, this is Intarja Knitting. I, since I'm using her Patreon minis, this version of the pattern, she does have a fingering weight version and a DK weight version. I wanted to do the DK weight version. I wanted to do a, a, um, a thicker blanket and I just felt like the fingering would take forever in for a blanket. So I just wasn't loving that idea but i still wanted to use her patreon minis so i'm holding it double i got a couple crosses in and i had leftover yarn when i was doing this following her pattern it was all great and then i didn't and i ran out 
And so my friend Annie from Knits and Burls, she sent me, because at the time she was also getting the Patreon minis as well, she sent me a little bit of hers so that I could finish it off. And then the next one did the same thing. I'm like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, this is going to be miserable to, like, every color wonder, am I going to have enough? So I ripped it all out. And how I modify the pattern, because it's a paid-for pattern, I'm not going to give exact measure or, like, exact numbers. I'm just going to round. I'm just going to pick a number, okay? So, you know, she tells you to cast on so many for here, here, and here. Let's say that number is 10, I would do one less. So I would do nine, nine, nine. And then she tells you to go, you know, maybe 10 rows up or 10 repeats, I would do nine. So whatever numbers are in her pattern, I would go one less. And that seemed to work to for a 20 gram mini for me. But everybody's knitting is different, but that's just what worked for me. So. If you guys are doing the same thing, maybe that will be helpful for you guys. But there you go. Okay, next on the list is some socks. In my, this is my sock knitting bag. I think I spilled coffee on this one. That's okay. No biggie. <laughs> okay, so I have one done, and this is Felici Sucker Punch, I think is the colorway. I cast on 56 stitches. It's a, just a vanilla sock pattern. I do the um, shadow wrap heel and I chose some, I really actually super loved my choice for the heel. It's always difficult for me with the um, self-striping yarn. Like my OCD kicks in and I can't just keep going like and then have weird striping on the heel and then picking back up for the foot. I don't know. It just doesn't work with my brain. I don't know why. <laughs> so I like, I was at the yellow and I kind of realized like, there's no green in my sock. Maybe I should add a green for the, the heel because then I just feel like it would flow so great. And, um, so I, looked in my stash for some green yarn because you kind of have to be picky about it too, right? You can't do something that is going to clash. It, like All these colors are bright, but a little bit muted at the same time. And so I kind of needed the same thing with the, the heel color. So um, this is, it's a super fun yarn. It does have Stellina in it. Um, but I don't know. I just, I thought that this was a really great, color and I absolutely love it. I'm super smitten with how these are turning out. And then I've, um, so these, this Felici yarn, this is their old Felici yarn. They have another one. It's not called Felici. Mm, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like one letter off. It's really weird, but the reviews on it are awful. And it, so it's nitpicks, um, and I think maybe it comes in 100 gram skeins now. I am not sure. But this, when I bought this, it was 50 gram skeins. Um, and here is where I am at for the second one. I just started this yesterday. And I would say not always do I need them to line up, but I wanted this one to line up for whatever reason. Maybe because I felt like I kind of started at the beginning of like the, the pink to the purple, like kind of rainbow order. I don't know, but I definitely wanted it to all match. I was like that song, like on top of spaghetti or whatever, like where the meatball rolls off the table, my little mini ball just rolled off my lap. <laughs> Anyways, so that's where I'm at with these. This is a really fun, like just car knitting, Round and round you go. Cannot wait to get done with the cuff. I don't love, so I use US zero. <laughs> I use a nine inch circular. Yeah. I use US zero nine inch circular chow goo needles. 
That's what I've been really liking for socks lately. But the ribbing is not my favorite on the nine inch socks. I don't know why. So anyways, but then I have some double points in here as well. Oh, and another nine inch circular. Yep, that'll be for the toe. But I, I will use the nine inch circulars even for the shadow wrap heel too. I do feel like it's totally fine, it works. Okay, I'll get back in there. Those are my Felici Sucker Punch is the colorway. And again, I hope that they go back to the Felici yarn. I've, I've not heard good things about the, the new kind, whatever it is. All right, next. Ooh, this is kind of a big one. This is my last works in progress that I'm going to show you because it's really just what I've been working on. Dishcloth, sock, alignment, and my advent blanket shawl by Ozetta. I've, I think I've made quite a bit of progress on this since I've showed you guys last. I am three and a half colors away from starting the decreases. So how this works is it's called a blanket shawl. So it's blanket like in its size. So it, I'll put a picture of it up here. I love how it wraps around, but this is your, your neck side here. And then like, so you do, you start over here, start on one side, increase, increase, increase. And then you get to a certain amount of stitches or a certain length, and then you just knit flat with no increases or decreases for a certain amount. And then you'll decrease again on the other side to mirror the first side that you did. So I'm looking forward to being at those decreases because I do think it's gonna go, it's gonna feel like it's going faster. The yarn that I'm using here is my Naughty Pine 2023 Advent. That's the majority of it, it was a fade. But I, as I approach the halfway mark on that with my skein, so 12 would be the halfway mark, I was not halfway through my blanket shawl. And so at that point, once I realized that I took out my 2022 Advent project, which I had planned to do anyways, it was something that I designed and I just didn't love how it, was, how it turned out and I wasn't wearing it. The yarn is too beautiful just to sit. So I took that out and I, I like how I took them out, took everything out. I actually just like, I showed this on Instagram. It, it's a reel. So if you're curious and want to see that, just go over to my Instagram page. It's one of my most recent, more recent reels. So I just like, as it was coming out of the project, as I was progging it, I just wound it up on my ball winder and that works, but I don't know if you can tell. So this color here where this progress keeper is, this is the yarn that I knit straight from undoing it. So you can see the, all that, you know, kinky yarn right there. And it's not as smooth. So I didn't know if it would be a problem or not, but it was definitely not as smooth. Um, so what I did from there is the other little minis, I put them back into a skein, like on my, uh, like on my, on my Swift. So I wrapped it back around on my Swift and I washed it to get all those kinks out. And it was just like instant relaxation. It was actually quite satisfying to watch. And, um, and then I just hung it to dry and it was pretty funny because, so I have, I had to lay out all the yarn from the 2023 advent and then pop in the 2022 advent where it would look nice as a fade. All of Naughty Pine's colors are very similar. So I felt like it was pretty easy to work some in. And I think I worked in seven, seven extra little minis. Quite a lot actually, I feel like, but seven extras. Um, so this is actually one of the ones that I had to wash and relax and you can't even tell anymore. But so I made these little sleeves for them, like little ball bands, and which I know is funny and probably way over the top, 
but I wanted to make sure that I kept them in the order that I had them planned out. I didn't want them to get lost in order and stuff because I knew like once I started using them, I probably wouldn't be able to figure that back out again successfully. So I like very carefully one at a time, put the ball band next to the sink where the yarn was soaking and I had two sinks going and two ball bands next to the sink. And then when I hung them up on my drying rack, like each little rung can kind of pop off. So like I popped that off and put the ball band on it right next to it. It was probably a little over the top, but again, didn't want, <laughs> I had spent so much time working on all the colors and I did not want to lose my color order. So there's that. That was a lot for, a lot to say <laughs> to explain that, but anyways. I am mostly weaving in a lot of the ends as I go. Like I have all my ends woven in to this point here. Um, and I probably need to go ahead and weave in the other ones because it's getting a little straggly. That's okay. I do use the like weave in as you go method. I don't know if it's Stephen, West, Stephen West's method or I do it kind of like I'm catching floats like every other stitch I catch a catch the float and then I and then I switch the yarns and do it again so that the end one is woven in and the beginning one is woven in before you even start I don't know, probably sounds confusing but anyways yes so 11 no 12 13 14 15 and a half more colors to go when I put it that way, I feel like it's so much to do, but maybe no, mm -mm. maybe not. No, that is right. No. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven and a half. Eleven and a half to go. Because I'm already well past the halfway mark. Eleven and a half. There you go. All right. And I don't know why I do not have my little knitting needle stoppers. I love these, you guys. I didn't know how much I needed these until I started using them and then selling them in my shop. These are part of the Valentine's set. I saw like one or two of these guys left in the shop, but they're so cute. I don't even know if those are showing or not, but. Okay. Ooh, okay, I wanted to say one more thing before we head out and get this video posted. That totally just reminded me when I put my finger up. I was totally doing it just to be silly, but um, we've been watching The Middle. It's a TV show. It It's an older, like... I don't even know when it first came out. It's not like old, but it's not like new either. Um, but it's it's a great, wholesome show. And um, the one of the characters, his name is Brick, he reads nonstop all the time. And so like when his dad comes up to like start talking to him and he's reading, he puts his finger up in the air. <laughs> he's just like, and like the way that he flicks his finger, it's hilarious. But we've watched that whole series once and now we're watching it again and we're cracking up even more the second time. If you start it, it's definitely one of those shows that I would start from the beginning and give it a few shows before you give up on it. Because once you get to know the characters, I tell you, I can relate to that mom in so many ways, which is a little bit sad. <laughs> But I can. I'm like, yep, that's me. Yep, that's how I feel. <laughs> Not with everything. She's pretty extreme, but just on a few things. Okay. Knitting plans. I just wanted to share this with you guys because my knit group, my Friday morning knit group, just decided to do a ranunculus make along. I've already made a ranunculus and I absolutely loved it. I made it... Hmm, I think in the summer. I made it in the summertime. Um, 
if you guys have been following for a while, my whole foot saga, um, I was, I could not walk for four months and that's when I did the ranunculus and I did it in 10 days, which I hear is actually pretty common for people to finish very quickly. And it was um, large needles, large yarn. It's one of my favorite sweaters to wear. And I didn't think it would be because it is, it's cropped, um, cropped for me. Like for some of you guys, I'm sure it wouldn't be cropped, but it's definitely cropped for me. And then it's um, three quarter length sleeves, which I actually really love. And I didn't think I would, but I, I love everything about this sweater. The yarn, the color, the pattern, the length, the sleeve length, everything. I love it, love it, love it. So we were talking to this morning in our knitting group and somebody threw out the idea like, hey, we should all do a ranunculus. Cause I said, I wanted to knit another one. Somebody else was like, oh, I want to knit one. And so I'm going to go shopping on Wednesday to a place called Noma Knits. My, I'm taking my um, stepmom out for her birthday. We're going to go have lunch and then um, go to the yarn, yarn shop out there. That is where I bought the Knitting for Olive Merino Cotton. And I bought that, um, I've done a Wyathea, Wyathea um, top. It's a short sleeve top. It's one of my favorite short sleeve tops. I really love it. And I, I love the drape of it. It is, it's just, it's a beautiful pattern. And then this yarn and the drape and it's cool to wear. I love it, love it. And so I thought it would be fun to do a cooler ranunculus since we're hitting spring almost. And so I'm, I was gonna show you, I don't have the yarn yet, but I'm hoping to get it on Wednesday. But this is the, it's Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino. Um, and I'm going to hold it double. It's a pretty thin yarn. Let's see. It is 250 meters for 50 grams. So that's a pretty like light fingering, almost lace weight yarn. I'm not sure in the color yet. Um, I might do something kind of more neutral, but we'll see. But I, this is what I'm hoping to make my next ranunculus in. And I think it'll be amazing. I'm really, really excited for that. So I just wanted to share that with you. I don't know if it'll be done in 10 days or not. Probably not because I'm working on a lot of other things, but I think we're going to start that project in a week or two. I'm not sure what, I think maybe two weeks. I think we're all supposed to get our yarn this week and then start the next week. But yeah, so that is it, you guys. We took care of our dishcloth business, future plans, whips, Finished objects really is just that one sock and the dishcloths. I think we're good to go. Oh, 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 no, no, no. I forgot. I was going to show, or I was going to share with you guys a couple things that you guys can find on my website, www.backporchfiberco.com. Put it down here and there will be a link in the show notes as well. So there's two things in on my website that you cannot get on Etsy for various reasons. So one is a free pattern. It is called Genesis Sock Pattern, and it is just a basic seed stitch. It's a vanilla sock with seed stitches in there. And it is like, if you're wanting something, if you're a beginner or even for experienced knitters, I feel like it's great. But if you're just wanting something a little bit more than, um, than a vanilla sock, it's super easy, super, super easy. So that is on there for free. You guys can just download it. No purchase required. Um, and then the second thing that is on there. So hold on, back up. I'm really hoping that this is filming right because I can see like this sunshine on my camera and I'm just not so sure, but I'm really hoping. If not, I'll just redo it. But anyways, okay. So the reason why the free pattern is only on my website and not on Etsy is because I can't do anything free on Etsy. I have to charge anything that is listed on Etsy. I have to charge for, which makes sense. It's their business. It's their platform. Okay. Hold on. We're going to move. Oh, okay. I don't know what that did, but let's hope that the, all that other stuff wasn't wasted. We'll see. <laughs> okay. The other thing that is on Etsy and I, or on my website and I cannot 
like they're the wholesaler that I have purchased these from, they just have rules about not listing on third party sites like Etsy, eBay, Amazon, and all of that. So to be respectful of that and to follow those rules, I can only have these on my website. And I am so excited, you guys, to have these on my website. Let me show you. These are the Twice Sheared Sheep Sock Rulers. So I have them in pink, purple, and teal. If you guys have not seen these, this is gonna like rock your world. These are amazing. So I have one out of the package, but then those I don't wanna take out. So do you guys remember those slap bracelets that you know we had in elementary school, junior high, depending on our ages? These are slap bracelet sock rulers. Now, I don't go around wearing this, but for those of us that don't have ginormous sock knitting bags for a hard, um, like wooden ru ruler, these things fit so good in here, you guys. Like, so good. They just pop in. I love it. So I will tell you, though, how to use these. When I first use this for the very first time i'm like approaching the size i was knitting a men's 11 sock for my daughter's boyfriend and in my mind i'm thinking like well this is the end point so i need to go to like two inches below or an inch and a half you know depending on how you do your toes and i'm like there's no way that's not big enough like it's not even big enough for my foot there's no way and then i um, I read the instructions. So you place your sock ruler with the arrow and snug against the heel or toe of your sock and knit until you reach the line for your desired size. Then you begin your toe or your heel. So I should knit to the 11 and then start the toe. Like, okay, I tell you like his socks fit perfectly when I used this. This is an amazing ruler. So you can find these on my website. I always do free shipping over $50 too. So I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I like when I saw that I could buy these and put them in my shop for you guys, I just knew I had to because like literally the things that are in my shop are the things that I love myself, the things that I use every day, just bringing them to you guys. So, I don't know, like I, I just can't tell you guys enough, like you guys need to go buy one of these. These are amazing, amazing. Grab a couple because you'll want them in all of your sock and being bags. This pink one I'm actually keeping for myself. That's why it's out of the package. But anyways, so these are also on my website, backporchfiberco.com. Oh, look, these are all my advent colors that I have left. And there's one more that's in my bag. I'm not taking them out of here, sorry. But, it, but you can see that like it goes to like this beautiful, like deep, it's kind of a blue almost. I don't know. It's like a moody midnight blue. So pretty. All right. That's a wrap, you guys. Thanks for sticking along if you're still here. Thank you so much, and we'll see you guys next time.